Session 42. Words are symbols of ideas, and we have been learning, discussing, and working with words as they revolve around certain basic concepts. Starting with an idea, personality types, doctors, occupations, science, lying, actions, speech, insults, compliments, etc., we have explored the meanings and uses of ten basic words, then, working from each word, we have wandered off toward any ideas and additional words that a basic word might suggest, or toward any other words built on the same Latin or Greek roots. By this natural and logical method, you have been able to make meaningful and lasting contact with 50 to 100 or more words in each chapter. And you have discovered, I think, that while five isolated words may be difficult to learn in one day, 50 to 100 or more related words are easy to learn in a few sessions. In this session, we learn words that tell what's going on, what's happening, what people do to each other or to themselves, or what others do to them. Ideas 1. Complete exhaustion, you have stayed up all night. And what were you doing? Playing poker, a very pleasant way of whiling away time? No. Engaging in some creative activity, like writing a short story, planning a political campaign, discussing fascinating questions with friends? No. The examples I have offered are exciting or stimulating, as psychologists have discovered, it is not work or effort that causes fatigue, but boredom, frustration, or a similar feeling. You have stayed up all night with a very sick husband, wife, child, or dear friend. And despite all your ministrations, the patient is sinking. You can see how this long vigil contains all the elements of frustration that contribute to mental, physical, and nervous fatigue. And so you are bushed, but completely bushed. Your exhaustion is mental, it is physiological, it is emotional. What verb expresses the effect of the night's frustrations on you? To enervate. 2. Tongue lashing, you suddenly see the flashing red light as you glance in your rearview mirror. It's the middle of the night, yet the police flasher is clear as day, and then you hear the low growl of the siren. So you pull over, knowing you were speeding along at 70 on the 55 mile an hour limit freeway, after all, there was not another car in sight on the deserted stretch of road you were traveling. The cop is pleasant, courteous, smiling, merely asks for your driver's license and registration, even says, please. Feeling guilty and stupid, you become irritated. So what do you do? You lash out at the officer, with all the verbal vituperation welling up in you from your self-anger. You scold him harshly for not spending his time looking for violent criminals instead of harassing innocent motorists, you call into question his honesty, his ambition, his fairness, even his ancestry. To no avail, of course, you stare at the traffic ticket morosely as the police cruiser pulls away. What verb describes how you reacted? To castigate. 3. Altruistic Phyllis is selfless and self-sacrificing. Her husband's needs and desires come first, even when they conflict with her own. Clothes for her two daughters are her main concern, even if she has to wear a seven-year-old coat and outmoded dresses so that Paula and Evelyn can look smart and trim. At the dinner table, she heaps everyone's plate, while she herself often goes without. Phyllis will deny herself, will scrimp and save, all to the end that she may offer her husband and children the luxuries that her low self-esteem does not permit her to give herself. What verb expresses what Phyllis does? To self-abnegate. 4. Repetition You have delivered a long, complicated lecture to your class, and now, to make sure that they will remember the important points, you restate the key ideas, the main thoughts. You offer, in short, a kind of brief summary, step by step, omitting all extraneous details. What verb best describes what you do? To recapitulate. 5. No choix de vivre, perhaps you wake up some gloomy Monday morning, why is it that Monday is always the worst day of the week, and begin to think of the waste of the last five years? Intellectually, there has been no progress, you've read scarcely half a dozen books, haven't made one new exciting friend, haven't had a startling or unusual thought. Economically, things are no better, 
same old debts to meet, same old hundred dollars in the bank, same old job, same old routine of the eight to five workdays, the tuna fish or chicken salad sandwich for lunch, the same dreary ride home. What a life. No change, nothing but routine, sameness, monotony, and for what? By now you'd better get up, this type of thinking never leads anywhere, as you've long since learned. What verb describes how you think you live? To vegetate. 6. Pretense your neighbor, Mrs. Brown, pops in without invitation to tell you of her latest troubles with a. her therapist, b. her hairdresser, c. her husband, d. her children, and or e. her gynecologist. Since Florence Brown is dull to the point of ennui, and anyway you have a desk piled high with work you were planning to light into, you find it difficult to concentrate on what she is saying. However, you do not wish to offend her by sending her packing, or even by appearing to be uninterested, so you pretend rapt attention, nodding wisely at what you hope are the right places. What verb describes this feigning of interest? To simulate. 7. Slight hint, no more, you are an author and are discussing with your editor the possible avenues of publicity and advertising for your new book. At one point in the conversation the editor makes several statements which might, or might not, be construed to mean that the company is going to promote the book heavily. For example, if we put some real money behind this, we might sell a few copies, or I wonder if it would be a good idea to get you on a few talk shows, no unequivocal commitments, no clear-cut promises, only the slight and oblique mention of possibilities. What verb expresses what the editor is doing? To intimate. 8. Helpful aspirin doesn't cure any diseases. Yet this popular and inexpensive drug is universally used to lighten and relieve various unpleasant symptoms of disease, aches and pains, fever, inflammations, etc. What verb expresses the action of aspirin? To alleviate. 9. When the bell tolls John Donne's lines, made famous by Ernest Hemingway, no man is an island, entire of itself, every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main, if a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were, any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Are truer than you may think, any person who views another's pain with complete detachment or indifference is shutting off important feelings. When people have suffered a bereavement, as through death, when they have been wounded by life or by friends, then is the time they most need to feel that they are not alone, that you share their misery with them even if you cannot directly alleviate their sorrow. Your sympathy and compassion are, of course, alleviation enough. What verb signifies this vicarious sharing of sorrow with someone who directly suffers? To commiserate. 10. When two men propose should you marry John or George? You're strongly and equally attracted to both. John is handsome, virile, tender, George is stable, reliable, dependable, always there when you need him. George loves you deeply, John is more exciting. You decide on John, naturally. But wait, marrying John would mean giving up George, and with George you always know where you stand, he's like the rock of Gibraltar, and sometimes almost as dull. So you change your mind, it's George, on more mature reflection. But how happy can you be with a husband who is not exciting? Maybe John would be best after all. The pendulum swings back and forth, you cannot make up your mind and stick to it. You fail to realize that your indecision proves that you don't want to marry either one, or perhaps don't want to give either one up, or possibly don't even want to get married. First it's John, then it's George, then back to John, then George again. Which is it, which is it? What verb describes your pendulum-like indecision? To vacillate. 